I think about all the worship gatherings that I've been in over decades, and a frequent um, refrain, a frequent prayer, a frequent phrase that's used um, among especially what we would call spirit-filled, charismatic Pentecostal worshipers is, oh, come Holy Spirit, come Lord, come and visit us. You know, we use this language. And I think back on that and I think, well, what did you expect to happen though? Like, how would you know that the prayer was answered? (laughs) You know, oh, come Holy Spirit and visit your people. Okay. Well, what do you imagine? Like, if if God's going to answer the prayer, what are you imagining, Kenny, is going to happen when the prayer is answered? And I think there are answers to that in a, in a Pentecostal context. You would imagine something like maybe a spiritual gift, a prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, healings, things like that, which are are real, you know, valid expressions of God's grace and visitation among his people. And those were the kinds of things that I think I was imagining and even seeing to some degree. But now when we gather as Catholics, we have the same prayer. When we listen to our pastor pray and he says, you know, may your spirit, you know, come. And I can't remember the exact words, but like the dew falls, you know, it's like, like we're, we're asking, we're invoking the Holy Spirit to come. And he really does every time. So now what I imagine as a Catholic, and my imagination is fulfilled, is that Jesus really is going to say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come. And he comes into the gathered congregation by virtue of the real presence of Jesus, which is confected when he answers the prayer of the church that the bread and the wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't just watch it happen, you know, on a table up in front of us and say, oh, look, you know, they say that's Jesus. No, we go up. We, we go to Jesus and we receive Jesus the way Jesus said we ought to, uh, that you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood in order to have my life in you. And that actually happens every time we go to Mass. So I use this phrase now that I I don't remember where I heard it, um, but I've taken it to be my own, (laughs) that you can never be closer to Jesus. When you understand Catholic Eucharistic theology for what it really is, you can never be closer to Jesus in the world, in this world, than you are at that point. moment where you've received the Eucharist. That's as close to Jesus as a person can be. And I often walk, you know, go back to my seat, uh, back to my place and, and kneel down and pray. And I think that I'm, I, I'm as close, I'm so close to Jesus right now as I'm eating this, this bread and have received the, the Eucharist. I've received Jesus. That, and that's when I pray my biggest prayers. That's when I, I say the things to the Lord that I need to say like I never do anywhere else is in that moment just after receiving the Eucharist because my, my prayer has been answered. You know, In fact, all the prayers I've been praying for years have been answered. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord, come visit your people. Well, as a Catholic, I've had that prayer answered by the truckloads, you know, and uh, it is truly the fulfillment of that promise of the presence of Jesus with his people. I don't think everybody experiences the mass maybe in their own emotions the same way as the next person does. So some of them, some of us are more disposed to experience things emotionally. And so you know, what I'm sharing right now uh, may hit people, you know, right in their heart and say, oh, I just love that. And other people would say, I, I've never felt that. I don't feel it now. I don't know how I ever could. And I get that. Not everybody's going to feel their faith in the same way. But I think maybe part of the problem or part of the issue is that we can get really familiar with things um, and stop thinking about them. 
And so then we just start doing them and stop thinking about them. And then you lose something of what is possible, let's say emotionally or in your senses or in your heart or however you want to put it. Because, well, now I'm not thinking about it anymore. So if I met somebody that said, I don't, I don't feel what you feel when I go to mass. I don't experience what you say you're experiencing when you go to mass. I would say, well, I, I understand that. Uh, and, and in fact, I don't always either, but I realize that it's because I haven't been thinking about it enough. My, like my advice to that person would be spend some time thinking about this. Like go to Eucharistic adoration and just sit there and look at that monst- monstrance, look at that host and say, it's you, Lord. It's you. It's you, Jesus. It's you. Uh, get in touch with what it really is by spending some time thinking about it. If you think about your faith, that's one of the ways to make your faith more real. And I think our thoughts and our emotions at some point will overlap and intersect and cross paths. But it's that way even in relationships, you know, when you're married to somebody or you have your kids and you just, you're going through the motions and you stop feeling maybe. And you have to pull back and say, I need to think about you. I need to give thought to you. I need to look at you. I need to reconnect with who you are and what you are so that I can experience you for who you are and, and get closer to you. And I think it's the same way with the Eucharist. Like maybe we just haven't thought about it in, in, a, in a, an engaging, prayerful way enough. We're just going to Mass, you know.